okay, we're going to make a table runner and we're going to pretend like this fabric is 10 feet long and 19 inches wide. So this rectangle will already be cut up. I'm going to cut them. So they're going to be nice, but we still want to finish the edges and the corners to make it look pretty. So what you'll need is you'll need a seam gauge set and you'll want to set it at the one inch mark, you know, the slider, and a disappearing marking pen. The disappearing ones are the best because then you don't have to worry about putting water on them. And you'll need your pins, you'll need your thread of course, and you'll need a nice hot iron with steam in it. So with water in it. And you want to set it on the highest setting or the setting for cotton poly because we're really going to steam these and make them look nice when we're all done and while we're doing it. So we're going to turn our fabric over and we're basically going to just do the corners now for mitering. So remember this is 10 feet long so we're only going to work on one short side at a time. We'll do this corner, this corner, then we'll do these two corners. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your seam gauge and you'll want to fold it up so that it's about an inch and I'm pretty good at knowing what an inch is these days. And when you take your pin you'll want to put it in very close to the end because we're going to be folding up this side too so we want to make sure nothing is puckering. And then you kind of want to go down maybe four inches, maybe the, the width of your hand, and measure again and put another pin, just so that it's flat at least at this end. So that's good. We'll put another pin there. I'm having to lift it up because I'm on the ironing board. So, so that corner is done. So then we'll move to this other short corner. And you'll see my, I didn't even bother cutting off the selvage ends because we're folding it in an inch. So you don't even have to worry about this selvaged end. It's kind of nice to have. Too bad they aren't all like that. But, um, I mean, the selvage end is usually only about a half inch in width, if that, on most fabrics. So we'll be well beyond that for our one inch. So then we'll measure this one at one inch. Again, we'll stick our pin at the end. And I really could have put it here first and then there. It probably would have been easier, but it still works. Then we'll put another pin there. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing with the short side. And now this is not what it's going to look like. This is just so that we can fold these so we can press it and get little crease lines for us to follow when we do our miter. So we measured that at one inch. And so as you can see, it's good that I put the pin on the end because nothing is crinkled and I'm just going to use the same pin staying as close to the edge as I can because we're going to iron that and then do the same thing on this side so that's about an inch probably should have put the pin in the other way make it easier Okay, so now that side is done. And remember, we're, this is a 10 foot long piece, so maybe I just want to go ahead and iron this corner while I've got it up. So go ahead and, let me just, since I'm a lefty, I'm going to turn it around. And just kind of steam the end. And of course, yours will be a lot bigger, so I'm not ironing the pins of course because these are not glass head pins these are plastic head pins and they will melt 
So I'm just doing the edge and now I'm going to take out the pins so that I can iron the entire section. So you'll iron this section and then the other section 17 inches away. And again, you know, trying not to get too close to your pins, especially if they're plastic head like mine. I have glass head pins, but so I'm not ironing down any farther than where the pins were because I didn't measure down here. So then once I'm done with this side, I'll do the same thing to the other side. And I'm not worried at all about the middle right now. I'm just doing the ends. So when I leave this side, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put a pin in where I iron just to make sure everything stays nice. And then I'll move to the other side. At this point now, we have everything ironed. And what you'll want to to notice now is that when you open this up, so we'll just look at one corner here, and when you open it up, and I am going to have to remove this pin to open it up, you'll see, let's move that up, you'll see that you have a square here, and you'll see that all of these lines, this these two lines, and these two lines, they all meet at this one point here. And you'll, so you'll just want to take your marking pen and you know I'm not sure about about um, this on the ironing pad so I'll just put some denim under it. And you're going to want to mark that dot where they intersect. The short edge and the long edge, there's your dot. And we're going to still have to zoom out a little. There's your dot. Here's your short edge, your long edge, and we're going to bring them together so that this crease. This little crease here and the other little crease and the little point is pointy, but more importantly those two creases will just lock into each other. And your two edges are going to be perfectly matched up and you can stick a pin in there. And what you can see is you can see the little dot still. So what we have then is we have the fold on top with the dot and what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the machine just like that so that this edge is say completely horizontal and we're going to sew from this dot straight down. So if you want, what you can do, I mean it's, if you have this level and then sew straight down, you're going to be fine. But if you're still worried, you can take your straight edge and you can draw, you know, perpendicular, you can set it up so it's perpendicular. Um, you can set this top line with this fold, show the dot. Maybe I should have done it this way. I don't know if you could see the dot still. And so if this is straight with this, if this is level with this fold, then you can just, and you see the dot, then you can just draw a line with your marking pen and then follow that line. And so then you're going to sew down that line. 
and so you'll do this for every corner so so that corner is basically done and you might want to put a pin on the end here while you're fiddling around with the other ones or you could do all of this at the machine in which case you probably don't need any pins at all this is one way to mark your stitching line I think it's actually quicker and easier and if you have a clear ruler like a quilting ruler they usually have a 45 you'll see it says 45 there they usually have a 45 degree line so I mark tape on it I also mark tape on the 1 and 3 eighths line right here 1 and then 1 2 3 eighths because that's the line that we'll use for our our uh, one inch hem you'll see in a minute what I mean so here's our this is different fabric so here is our our dot and what we do is we take the 45 line and we line it up with the straight edge either straight edge will work but we'll line it up with this straight edge and so here's the 45 and we have to turn it and when we line it up with that straight edge and this point here is the point of the white fabric and so you'll see what happens is there's our dot so you can still see it and this is our stitching line right here so even if you don't have this mark here you can and you say you're 45 you put it way up there you can always just drag it down until you see your dot and until this well this even if you don't have it taped here you just drag it down until you see your dot so so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line I usually start at the dot and go out so that I don't ripple the fabric so there's your line so then at that point then you go and you take your right sides together and you make sure that these two creases lock into each other and you have your point now this one's probably not going to work because this fabric is not square but so your edges are together your little creases are locked in and you can pin down here and then pin on the other side now this pin on the other side is the one you'll have to remove at the machine and so then you'll put it in the machine this way so that this fold is horizontal it's on the horizontal plane and then you'll stitch and then so that's that's one method for marking your your stitching line so now we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna start on my machine I'm gonna use stitch number three and I'm actually gonna start it right on the dot and then my machine will go three or four stitches forward three back and then it'll go forward and then when I get to the very end I'll hit I'll stop I'll hit the reverse button and it'll go back three stitches and forward three stitches and stop so I'll do that for every corner I like using stitch number three for that okay so we're gonna go to the machine So here we are at the machine and here's my first corner and you can see I have this fold lined up in a horizontal plane like I was talking so whatever you want to use on your machine any horizontal line um, just line it up like that 
and I'm going to press uh, stitch number three and I have mine set for 2.5 millimeters as a default so I would suggest setting it for that instead of the 2.0 that it comes with and I'm going to just make sure that this dot is right underneath the needle so here's my red arrow so I'll line it up with the red arrow and line it up just at the start of the red dot. Now my pin here has to come out because it's in the way. So I'm making sure it's still horizontal and lined up with the red arrow and it's right underneath my needle and you'll see because this fold will be right at the end of of this part of the foot. The fold will come right up to the end. The arrow will be on the line. Mine's a little off the line. And I'll start with my needle down. So you probably can't see that, but we have a needle down position. And that's it. We're just going to go and stitch. And I'm going to set it for slow right now and I'm just going to guide it through. So it's going to go three or four forward, three back, and then it'll continue. So then I'll lift up, I'll hit the reverse button on the machine, and then I'll press my foot again. So now it's going backwards and then forwards again. That's how it does its locking stitch. And that's it. So then I'll lift that up. So I'm going to remove this pin. I've got this horizontal. Putting this in, lining it up the back of my foot and the red dot, put my needle down and proceed. So it goes four and then four and then it goes forward. I kind of wish it only went three but it goes four. So I lift up, hit my back button And it stops on its own. Lift it up. So let's go back to the ironing board and we'll turn everything out and iron it. Okay, so my stiletto, it looks like an awl, but it's really a stiletto. It's just for guiding and helping you at the machine. It has a plastic sleeve. And you can actually use that to, to push your um, points out too, or even a, a pen where you take out the, take the ink part out, you can use that, or like I was using my blunt scissors, or I could even use this without the plastic. But at any rate, so we're going to take each corner, you stick your thumb inside, and your finger hold down one of the, hold down the flap, and then just turn it. and then you can poke it out a little bit to make it pointy and pretty if you want kinda I always let the flaps kinda go where they want or I stick my finger back in and put them where I want Cause this flap I had turned it the one way and you can finger press it and then we'll just regular press it so the same thing here stick your finger inside you could put your thumb there and push it in with your thumb or your finger or what have you and push it through give it a little finger press I could even have made that one better so I still haven't ironed them again or anything so it's just kind of laying out now like I was saying if yours is 10 feet long you're probably going to have to take your your gauge and measure your one inches all the way along. 
So we'll pretend that this is 10 feet long and we'll set it at one inch again and you'll just have to come down and measure your one inch. It's easier to stick the blue part on the inside because then you can push it if it's not right and you'll just have to pin it like you know not not much like maybe every foot even you won't have to do it that much and you'll want to just measure your one inch and even if it's off just a hair because it's going to be pretty and ironed and pressed it's not going to even, nobody's ever even going to notice it. So you'll have these pins then. Probably every foot. And then what you'll have to do is, you'll have to iron in between them and then pull the pins out. And same thing over here on the sides, you'll probably have to have some pins and and so on. So, so all you have to do then is, you know, pin the whole length and then just take your steam iron and gently steam it. Now you don't want to stretch it or press it out of place and just go in between the pins all the way along. And from what I've read, you really should when you start your pinning, and I think it's on another video, when you do start your pinning, you really should start your pinning at the corners. Because you want to make sure your corners are right. And then start pinning from the corners towards the inside. When you get to the middle stop, then start from this corner and pin to the inside. Because you can kind of stretch the inner parts and make them fit, but you can't really stretch your corners because then they'll get out of square. So you, the corners are important. So then once you've pressed everything in between the pins, then you can go ahead and kind of press, you know, don't pull your iron around and press and stretch everything. Just kind of lay it on there, jiggle it a little. You can lightly press across the top, just kind of pressing. And then once you've got everything pressed on the outside, you can turn it around and press it on the inside. And at this point, to be honest, I would starch it because it's going to look gorgeous when it's starched. And it's going to be crisp and beautiful and you can actually starch both sides of it. I love starch. And it's going to be so stiff. I mean you don't even have to sew the hem. So it's nice and crisp. I could have pushed this corner out more. Once you turn it over you can go back and forth because it's nicely starched now. So there you have it. It's beautiful. And it's going to sit on a table so gorgeously. If you had a white table. Your table runner. It'll be beautiful. Oh, this is really not the right width, but it'll be gorgeous. And that's that. You could even sell these after you're done. They're so beautiful.